Welcome to Paternal Family History, Part 4. In Part 3, we briefly mentioned one of my ancestors, who was a bit of a rascal. He went completely broke. And like most guys in our family, he was set in his ways, right out of the womb. Wasn't willing to change until he had hit rock bottom. He got funds from his brother to pay off all his debts. And that wouldn't, wouldn't be easy for him to ask him to do that. I need money! Money! You know. But the brother did that willingly. Moved to a different city. Became a laborer at a mill. Which was great because his brother owned a mill somewhere else as well. So, you know, it was kind of family business almost. And eventually, because he was fairly charismatic and traveled in the right social circles, he became owner of that mill. I can't see that happening today with me especially you know cuz I'm not the greatest person when it comes to socializing with people at work and I don't have drinks with the boss you know but my ancestor he became very wealthy and he went back and forth across the Atlantic that wasn't very pleasant. It wasn't a plane ride. It was by boat. And there would have been a lot of <laughs> because of the big waves. And it would have been pretty nasty. And uh, But people were tougher back then, you know, than they are today and willing to put up with more to get what they needed. And he eventually set up shop in the States. Now his brother, his fortunes made a turn for the worse. You know, it was funny because one, he came from the ashes and went straight to the top and the other was at the top and went into the ashes. <laughs> But that's life. You know. So the brother had he's the guy that gave the you know my ancestor the money to set up to pay off his debts, like I said earlier. But he was never paid back that money and he didn't like that very much, of course. And uh, so there was some resentment there. And after that, he got in a fight with the city. They took his mill away because they felt that it was polluting the stream. That didn't go over very well, okay, no. He got into a legal battle with the city and he eventually won because his argument was, you know, the people in the city itself were the main polluters. He went to work after that because after the financial settlement that you know they gave him and he worked as a bookbinder but shortly after he got sick he was bedridden for two and a half years and then he died and the family would have been okay because he had a nest egg but when he was laid out it became known that that money had been stolen so the wife was impoverished she had to get her son to move in with his wife and the two ladies 
they've had they've fought like cats and dogs. They did not get along with each other. You know. So the mother had to beg for food in her own house because of that really bad relationship. So my grandparents said, okay, well, come live with us. And that worked out for a couple of years, and whatever. But eventually, they, they wanted to move to Canada, so she had to go somewhere else. And, and that was during World War II. And she was deathly afraid of all the bombings, you know, those darn English people, you know, bombing all the time. Which is why, you know, we look down upon those people. But, you know, I mean, that's a different story, I guess. And <laughs> but I'm going to stop it for today, though. You know, I don't want to get in too much trouble. And uh, I guess the moral of the story is always be friendly with everyone. And drink lots of beer. Alright, ciao.